my geeky friends, this is the A7 micro pedal for more. And in this video, I'm going to share my seven favorite settings with you. If you want to skip straight to the sounds, then there's a number right here telling you where in the video they start. Also, there are some timestamps in the video description down below so you can skip this boring bit about how the pedal works and just go straight to how it sounds. Go on. Aha, you're still here. So you want to know more info about the A7 before you hear the sounds. That's fine. Let's do it. If this is your first time seeing one of the 7 Series pedals, then let's explain what's going on. So we've got some LEDs down here, and they are the different types of reverb in the case of the A7. So flashing there is number one. That's the plate reverb. Then we've got the hall at number two, the warp, shake, crush, shimmer, and dream. All exciting sounding names and, and props to Moore for naming them something interesting. I'm, I'm excited to hear what they sound like. Let's go back to one. Simply, signal goes in here, signal comes out of here, power goes in here. Normal pedal operation style. Then up at the top right is the mix, so that's how much of the reverb of the pedal is mixed with your original guitar signal. So having it halfway there would mean 50% of what's coming from the pedal and 50% of whatever's coming in here mixed equally. All that way up would mean everything coming in is affected by the pedal going out. There's no dry signal. And then all the way down is the dry signal. No effect. Let's put that back to halfway. Then we've got the decay, which is the time it takes for the reverb to die out. So kind of like the size of the room, if it were a room. The tone is the tone of the reverb. So if it's down here, it's going to be not maybe not muffled, but certainly more highs as you go up this way. So more bright. Up the top left is X, which is very confusing. Uh, maybe they didn't know what to call it, but um, reverb space control, according to the manual. I don't know what that is. We'll find out what that is in a moment. And then below that is the ever awesome chaos knob, which is the special effects control. We're gonna have to fiddle with that. If you're wondering how to tell which reverb is which, then it kind of goes from more normal to more wacky in this direction. And also the names of the reverbs are written on the side of the pedal, which you can't see from this direction. And if you had it stacked tight on a pedal board, it might be a disadvantage. Underneath the chaos button is the save knob. If you press it, it will cycle through the different types of reverb. If you hold it, it will save that preset to whichever preset bank you're in. Number five is just going on its own. Um, it's it's not pedal's not even turned on. If I turn it on and then off again, it, it makes no difference. What have I done? Right. 
Um, <laughs> number five is called Crush, and it's got a crushing lo-fi reverb, which um, sounded a bit like the previous one until I started maxing out the chaos knob, which got me into that. Chaos. Okay, well done. They, they named that correctly. So it's again, it's a, it's a soundscape that I would say is um, cine, cine, cinemagraph... Cinema... A, a movie soundscape. So you could, you know, really make something nasty with this. And that's what I did, and I'm going to do some more for you now. So uh, desperately avoiding turning the pedal back on, but here we go. I've just kind of realized that I think this is the kind of pedal that you need to have near you rather than on the floor and set on one setting. I think that you get the most fun out of this and the most uh, control by having it close to you like I've got it now. And then as you're playing, change the parameters on the knobs because just having one setting kind of just makes it either, um, what's the word, boring. <laughs> Uh, unaffected, like so. Okay, that's that's not that interesting, or totally chaotic with the chaos knob. So, I think that it's so sensitive with these tiny little uh, twitches of those knobs that you really need to have it near you. I will be the first to admit that ambient music uh, excites me and interests me, but I am not anywhere near a master of it. I'm nowhere near an apprentice of uh, ambient music. And if you like ambient music, you should definitely check out a channel called Chords of Orion. That guy, Bill, is absolutely phenomenal. And in this video, I was kind of aspiring and he was my, 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 my Yoda in, in, in my mind. But enough about Bill and his amazing uh, talents with ambient music. The A7 uh, has a lot packed in and you can use it as a regular reverb. There's some beautiful stuff. Firstly, it's beautiful. And I have used the examples in this video to show how wacky it can get. So if it was too wacky for you, then rest assured there are less wacky settings. So all you've got to do is reduce the chaos and it becomes more um, normal, more beautiful, less chaotic. I can't comment on the quality of these ambient reverbs compared to something else because quite honestly, my experience with ambient reverbs is limited. However, this pedal did push me to be more creative and, and, and think less musically and more um, more more moodily. So rather than playing notes like stuck in the pentatonic or the, the major or whatever, I was thinking like that's that's got to be low down there. And then we bring in something that's high and it doesn't really matter what kind of note it was. That's not ambient music, but for the soundscape that I was creating, that's how it felt. Um, and with some training, maybe I can improve that. So it's not the pedal's fault, it's mine. I'm currently reviewing myself. This is weird. One thing I don't like about the pedal is when you save a patch, it makes a clicking noise. There, like a little pop. It's not very audible, and in a band situation, you wouldn't hear that. But it does look, do like a and that's, you know, that's not good. So maybe the circuit could have benefited from cutting the, the volume of the pedal before saving the patch. Obviously, as a micro pedal, all the knobs have to be also micro, and that's very hard with my sausage fingers, but I actually found it pretty okay. The thing is, this pedal is very sensitive to where you're twiddling. So it's not just like, like an EQ where you go, I'll add maybe two or three more clicks of 
space or treble. This one is like, okay, it's like, it's like a shower. So when you're having a shower and someone else has used it before you, oh, this is strange, someone else has used it before you and it's too cold, you make it a little bit hotter and then it's too hot and then you make it a little bit colder and you can't quite get it until you're right in between there and there. And that's what this pedal's like, it's, it's very twitchy. Quite pleased with that weird analogy. The mix knob is your savior if you want to keep it musical rather than wacky. Uh, the decays work really, really well. There's, there's enough on tap to make it really super weird or quite reserved. The tone, I didn't mess too much with the tone actually. I mainly left the tone in, in the sort of top end um, because I didn't want those dark repeats. They kind of to, tended to, to not be heard very well. Um, but the chaos and the X knob, you can do fantastic stuff. And I really think this is one of those pedals you need to have near you so not down on a board away from you and you, you press the preset and you go for it and that's the whole song that you're playing this for me is a pedal that needs to be maybe on a mic stand or, or totally close to you or if you're doing something like i've got it and got it and have a, a table then somehow you benefit mostly from having this near you my final word on the a7 is that i think you should go and buy it especially if you've made it this far in the video because those weird wacky sounds open up a whole different soundscape for you and to escape from if you're stuck in blues like I am or, or, or whatever, it, it takes away that musicality and lets you really explore the guitar and the pedal as a different kind of instrument. Once again, I must say that you can get more normal sounds out of this and you can get more weird sounds out of this. I kind of stuck somewhere in the middle and tried to show some of the weird stuff and some of the more beautiful stuff. So uh, I hope that's clear that you should go and try one, basically. I'd like to know what you think. Let me know what you thought of the pedal in the comments section down below. And as I mentioned the word comments, it means you've made it to the end of the video club. Congratulations to prove that you are a member of this prestigious elite. When you leave your comment down below, please also include the phrase <coughs> that will bind us in this brother and sisterhood forever. And we should also have a jolly good giggle. Thank you to Moore for sending me the paddle. Thank you, of course, to you for watching. Otherwise, I'd just be sitting in here talking to a camera. And, and actually, I'd be okay with that playing the guitar. Uh, there are more videos floating around over there, and there's a subscribe button just down there. And I, I'd love it if you, if you, you know, smash that one. All right. I um, hope you enjoyed. I'll see you soon. Bye bye.